obviously, for those of you who don't know, uh, CJ Grisham, uh, Bash Sergeant. Obviously, I'm not here speaking for the Army. However, I've been serving for 19 years now, and I fought in two wars, sir. So this freedom that you have to walk around this capital, yes, I helped you to secure. Yeah. Now, um, I, I'm not really going to talk a lot about my case, because my case has been out there... Uh, as you know, last week it, it ended in a hung jury. The prosecution could not convince a jury of my peers, which had two police officers and the wife of a judge on it, uh, that I was guilty. So it's kind of a miracle that I even got a hung jury. What I want to talk to you about is, you know, we talk about losing our rights, our constitutional rights. There's a story in today's paper about what is really fundamentally wrong with this country and why things like what we're doing here, just talking, it's about time that we stop just talking. The reason I say that is, so we had a hung jury. I, I'm guilty of, or not guilty, excuse me. I'm, I'm accused of a class B misdemeanor. A class B misdemeanor, not a felony, not a violent crime, no different than uh, driving my car 20 miles an hour over the speed limit, all right? The Bell County just had the longest Class B misdemeanor trial in history, the most expensive Class B misdemeanor trial in history, and the longest jury deliberation for a Class B misdemeanor in history. Why? Because I refused to let a police officer illegally disarm me. But that's not where the problem started. The problem has started since the verdict was given. And that is that we have a judicial system right now that does not serve you and me. There's no longer such thing as a criminal justice system. There is a criminal justice system, is what we've got now. On my jury pool, there was an inordinate amount of law enforcement and government officials. Even after it was weighed down and weeded, weeded out to, to the bottom six, we still ended up with three government officials. The media have been trying to get access to the professions of this jury pool, which is completely legal under Texas law, and guess what? The judge is obstructing that. The judge is refusing to allow the media access to how they came about selecting a jury pool. In other words, we've got a prosecutorial system and we've got a judicial system that is actively geared towards finding you guilty because it is a commercial entity to get money. The entire judicial system is about taking your money and giving it to the government. Because once you're arrested, you have to pay a bail. That's, that's your first cost, is just to post bail or bond. After that, you've got to pay an attorney. After that, you've got to pay court costs. If you're guilty, you've got to pay additional fines. And depending on what the uh, allegation is, for the next five, ten years, you're paying additional costs. It's all about money. The system is about lining the pockets of government officials, and they can't do that if they find you innocent. So we've created all of these crimes that aren't crimes because in order for a crime to be committed under the common law, which is what our justice system is built under, there has to be an injured party. Who is an injured party when you and your son are walking down the road, minding your own business in the middle of the country, out where uh, there's nothing but cattle and pastures and all that kind of stuff? Who exactly is an injured party when you get pulled over for speeding? Who exactly is the injured party when you don't wear your seatbelt? Who is the injured party? Who is the injured party? when just about any of these laws that we have, for example, you didn't mow your lawn. Where is that injured party? In other words, there's no crime. There cannot be a crime if there's not an injured party. There's no justice. There is not a criminal justice system anymore. There is a criminal justice system. <laughs> well, All right? <laughs> and I'll tell you what, and I'll tell you where it starts. It starts with these DPS officers right here. That's right, yeah. Yep. Because these guys talk about obeying the law, but only the parts of the law that fit their narrative to repress you Amen. and oppress you. They don't care that the law says that any ordinance or departmental policy that regulates any more strict than state law, your right to keep and bear arms, is not enforceable. They don't care about that part of the law. They don't want to see you with guns because it threatens their power. Yeah. That's what it is. They're not taking our guns by just walking up to you and taking your guns. 
They're taking your guns by charging you with bogus bullshit crimes or bullshit ordinances. Then they take your guns while you're going through the criminal justice system. And then you're lucky if you get those back after you're acquitted. It will not happen. It's happening all over the place up at Fort Hood with soldiers up there. Soldiers up at Fort Hood have been having their guns taken away from them on minor little misdemeanor crimes, class B, class C misdemeanor crimes, and if they happen to have a gun on them when they committed this, this heinous act of walking down the wrong side of a road, then those guns are confiscated and they have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to get those guns back. Would you rather spend thousands and thousands of dollars fighting the government to get your guns back or just spend a few hundred to buy a few more guns? That's their goal. That's how they're doing it, through the criminal justice system. And that's something that we can no longer just sit here at the steps of the Capitol and start talking about. That's what I did on the side of the road that day. I took a stand. And everybody needs to take a stand for once and just stop. Until we start standing up to encroachments and our rights, at the time that they're being violated, that's the time to stand up. Not in the courts. The time to stand up for your rights is at the moment they're being violated. That's what we've got to do. And if it takes overpowering that jail system, then that's what it takes. But we can no longer just sit down and say, okay, you got me. Go ahead, arrest me. That's where I'm at now. Because it, it, it's, it's affected me personally. I have never in my entire life been charged with a crime throughout my entire life. For the last 20 years, I've held a top secret security clearance in the United States military. I rose to the rank of Master Sergeant faster than just about any other person in my field of work. And then, all of a sudden, some thug with a badge wants to come and grab my guns, and I won't let him. Now, I'm an enemy of the state, and these guys need six or seven people to follow me all around the Capitol grounds. <laughs> Oath keeping. This is the only point I want to make is we've got to stand up for our rights, not just come out here and talk about it. It's important for us to stand up for them every minute of every day. And I'm not advocating violence against police officers. They have a legitimate job out there. They are out there, yes, finding criminals that are stealing your cars and breaking into your houses and raping your daughters. Those are crimes because there's victims. But for everything else, there's no such thing as a law enforcement officer. They're revenue raisers. And we need to stand up to the revenue raisers and support the law enforcement officers. Thank you. Thank you, CJ. Thank you, CJ.